Have a good day! Oh, hello! L.A. Beast here. And ever since I was a little kid, I've been collecting some of the coolest shit around. And according to my third grade Valentine's Day card from 1993, John says, and I quote, Kevin has some of the neatest things. And today my goal is quite simple. And that is to blast all of you into a nostalgic past and remind you of all the crazy, rare, forgotten treasures of 80s and 90s pop culture, such as this game that I owned when I was three years old. Crackers in my bed, made by Parker Brothers back in 1987. Uh, how about this? A Super Soaker 100, uh, which was made, I guess, famous back in 1993 on the show Boy Meets World, as you can see right here. And of course, these 1989 Batman action figures made by Toy Biz, in correlation with the 1989 Batman movie. And my favorite character was always Bob, one of Joker's henchmen. And as you can see here in this picture, when I was about eight years old on Christmas, I received this Batmobile to which I still have after all these years. Why? Because my mom never threw away any of my shit. So what I've been doing since 2015, quite possibly because I'm a 100% genius, is to go on eBay and purchase back my favorite childhood toys in their original packaging for a steal of a price. And what I'm going to do here right now is show you what those items are worth today in 2020 and hopefully inspire you to go on eBay and buy back some of your favorite toys from your childhood. So without further ado, I'm the LA Beast, and let's go back in time. 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 Hello? LA Beast here. Let me just cut you off. And, uh, to, to which, what I have here in front of me right now is actually pretty damn sweet for the time. A 1990 Sports Illustrated sneaker telephone. And back in 1990, the sporting publication Sports Illustrated tried to entice their customers to purchase a 31 magazine subscription plan by offering them a free sneaker telephone. To which at the time, uh, these did not exist. Uh, and when it comes to pop culture, one of the only other references of a weird telephone that I have seen was in the 1988 film Coming to America. Uh, he had a hamburger telephone, which was actually pretty cool. And the way that I got my sweet Sports Illustrated sneaker telephone was actually knocking on doors, selling wrapping paper back in 1990. Uh, and as you can see right here, in like the bag of magazines, they used to have like prizes. Like if you sold certain stuff, you could like pick these cool prizes. Because I was such a phenomenal salesman and sold all that wrapping paper, I got my sneaker telephone basically for free. And now in 2020, these babies can go anywhere from $25 to $30. So you know what? Cha-ching! And then that's all I have to say about that. A great blast from the past. Next item. Now what I have here in my hand is a Talkboy Deluxe, which is a handheld voice recorder toy manufactured by Tiger Electronics from 1992 to 1998. And it was made popular by the 1992 film Home Alone 2 Lost in New York, to where Kevin McAllister used it to check into the Plaza Hotel like this. How do you do? This is Peter McAllister, the father. I'd like a hotel room, please. With an extra large bed, a TV, and one of those little refrigerators that you have to open with a key. Credit card? You got it. Now in the movie Home Alone 2 Lost in New York, Kevin McAllister always had to be one step ahead of the other kids, which is why he had this sleek, futuristic looking talk boy. And at the request of director John Hughes and 20th Century Fox, they contacted Tiger Electronics to turn this movie prop into one of the most sought after items of the 1993 holiday shopping season. So what Tiger Electronics had to do was come out with the Talkboy Deluxe 
with the slow motion action. My kids were home early. <laughs> and the sails started soaring to the heavens above. And what I just did was go on eBay in 2019 and purchase this for $76 uh, plus $11.20 for shipping. And even though it doesn't actually work, I think just owning one of these is actually a great investment. Because as you can see right here, selling on eBay a Talkboy Deluxe in the original box with the instruction manual is currently selling for $225. Uh, so I don't know if you have to go to your parents' house, uh, go to your childhood bedroom and look in your closet and find your Talkboy Deluxe, but maybe you're sitting on a gold mine and you don't even know it. And what I have next is an original 1996 Tickle Me Elmo manufactured by Tyco Toys to which I paid $11 and $22.05 in shipping. And when squeezed, Elmo laughs, shakes and vibrates and says, <laughs> And back in 1996, to which I'll explain in a minute, Tickle Me Elmo quickly became a fad what we now know is a viral trend, and parents fought to get this high consumer demand, limited supply item for their kids during the holiday season, and would go to great lengths to do so. Back in 1996, Tyco produced 400,000 units of Tickle Me Elmo and shipped them to stores across the United States, and the original retail price was $28.99. There was plenty of stock after the Thanksgiving holiday heading into Christmas of 1996, but all of a sudden, Tickle Me Elmo sold out, and another 600,000 units were ordered. Now the problem is that Rosie O'Donnell, who had a talk show at the time, gave a shout out to Tickle Me Elmo, and because there was already a shortage, this scarcity created a shopping frenzy, to where two women were arrested in Chicago for fighting over a Tickle Me Elmo, a Denver man spent $7,100 on one, now in Canada, a clerk at a local Walmart was the main recipient of a stampede at Midnight Madness, to where this poor clerk suffered a pulled hamstring, injuries to the back, jaw, knee, received a broken rib, and a concussion. And by the end of December 1996, all one million Tickle Me Elmos were sold. And from that point on, anyone lucky enough to get a Tickle Me Elmo were asking ridiculous prices, up to $1,000. But now today, in 2020, on eBay, most people are selling Tickle Me Elmos from anywhere between $100 and $200. Which is ridiculous. So, you know, I mean, if anybody wants to make me an offer, $500 next time. I'm not ashamed to say that at one point I played with dolls, including this 1990 Where's Waldo made by the Applesauce Inc. And I still have. I received this for Christmas as a child. This sweet Elvis troll doll, to which on eBay today in 2020, people are asking $37. To $85. But some of the more popular dolls that I've owned as a kid have included a vintage 1991 Hasbro Family Matters I Speak My Mind Steve Urkel doll to which back in 2015 I paid $45 and now in 2020 on eBay people are asking $50 to $75 for this exact same toy and some of the phrases that this Steve Urkel doll says are <laughs> Tiny cheese! No sweat, my pet. And did I do that? From 1989 to 1997, television network ABC had a family sitcom called Family Matters about the Winslow family, who had a nerdy neighbor named Steve Urkel, played by Jaleel White, who was obsessed over Laura Winslow. As the show quickly gained popularity, Urkel mania happened, to where there was even a Steve Urkel serial named Urkelos. And every Friday as a kid, watching Family Matters on TGIF, it was a no-brainer to go on eBay and purchase back this sweet toy from my childhood at a reasonable price. But buyer beware, because a few years ago, somebody on eBay was selling a possessed Steve Urkel doll, which looks actually kind of creepy without his glasses. But you know what? I have, I have not felt any negative energy yet. Next item. What I have here in my hand is an original 1996 first production run Vortex Howler Football made by the Koosh Company before they were bought out by Hasbro. And these babies on eBay in perfect condition 
in their original packaging can sell anywhere from upwards of $80. But I got my football for $7, plus $8.75 in shipping. Because as you can clearly see, this Vortex Howler football is in piece of shit condition. Now after Hasbro purchased the Vortex football from the Koosh company, they rebranded it under the Nerf name and used legendary NFL quarterback John Elway to market the product to where according to the commercials, he once held the world record by throwing one of these babies 90 yards. And today, because I have played football for 10 years of my life, I am about to put John Elway to shame. Let's make this baby whistle. John Elway, eat my dust. That's enough, I'm terrible. For those of you that don't know, this is a Teddy Ruxpin and his pal Grubby, made by the Worlds of Wonder Company from 1985 to 1990. To which when you put the tape cassette into the back of Teddy Ruxpin, he would actually read you the story and it felt like you had a friend. As you can see right here, when I received one for Christmas, back in 1987, at the time, Having an animatronic moving stuffed animal that could read you stories was unheard of. But with the use of a cassette tape and a special wire, both Teddy Ruxpin and his pal Grubby could read, interact, and laugh with you as they read you a story. And at the peak of its popularity, Teddy Ruxpin became the best selling toy of 1985 and 1986. And there was even a cartoon on television based on all of the characters from Teddy Ruxpin, which aired in 1986 called The Adventures of Teddy Ruxpin. Now back in 2015 on eBay, I purchased this Teddy Ruxpin in its original box for $60. Uh, and as you're about to see in a second, the mouth does not move. And in 2019, I purchased this Grubby in its original box for $97.99. And as I checked eBay in 2020 about a week ago, it all depends on how much these can sell for nowadays. But the prices I've seen range from $70 up to a few hundred dollars. And the cool thing you can do with Teddy Ruxpin is I can actually make Teddy Ruxpin speak in my voice. Hi kids, this is Teddy Ruxpin. I need to get my bearings straight. Have a good day. 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 Now the 80s and 90s have brought us great technology for the on-the-go person, such as myself, including a portable AM FM radio the portable CD player, and even the portable cell phone as seen here used by Zach Morris from the great television show Saved by the Bell. But one piece of technology that I specifically remember is this guy, a portable Sony Watchman television to where when I was in sixth grade, I watched the OJ Simpson verdict live from my classroom. Now a Sony Watchman was a line of portable pocket televisions trademarked and produced by Sony from 1982 to 2000. And here in the year 2020, since we have switched to digital television, pretty much the Sony Watchman is just as useful as the Dustbuster in Back to the Future 2. But after doing my research, I found out that the Sony Watchman was used in pop culture, especially in the 1987 film Wall Street, where Michael Douglas purchased one of these for his son Rudy, as he was showing to Charlie Sheen while eating lunch. And in the 1988 film Rain Man, Dustin Hoffman's character used one of these portable Sony Watchman TVs to watch his people court. And the crazy thing is, both Michael Douglas and Dustin Hoffman both won an Oscar for their roles in those movies. And if you want to own a piece of technological history, you too can go on eBay and purchase a Sony Watchman TV for $18.50 plus $6.95 shipping. Now, I've never been the greatest video game player in the world, but back in 1989, my parents purchased me one of these, an original Nintendo Entertainment System, to which this past Christmas, for a family member, I purchased the exact system that we received in 1989 in its original packaging 
for $150. And because I couldn't beat my high score in Tetris, I got upset and threw my original Game Boy against the wall and shattered the screen. But in 2015, I went on eBay, and although the box is in a little rough condition, purchased an original Game Boy in the box for around $60. And as I checked the prices in 2020 on eBay, these Game Boys in the original box can sell for a few hundred dollars. And with the video game industry since becoming a billion dollar industry, in my opinion, there's always going to be a demand for retro games. To where Bonk's Adventure can sell from anywhere from $450 to $500 and above. And games such as DuckTales 2, to which I bought this one for $14.99 from Funko Land back in 2001. If in good condition, can sell from $150 and above. And what I've been doing recently is going on eBay uh, and finding some of my favorite games at more reasonable prices and buying those back in their original boxes. To which I purchased one of my favorite games, Excite Bike, for $29, Super Mario Bros. 3 for $37.99, Rad Racer with the sweet 3D glasses for $55 and $4.39 shipping, Back in the day, I used to wear a Dick Tracy t-shirt, to which I loved the artwork, and purchased this game for $30 and $7.85 shipping. I always remember Bart Simpson with his skateboard and spray paint can, and although I've never played this game, I spent $31.21 with free shipping. I bought an original Nintendo poster for $22.95, and another great game, Adventure Island, for $38 plus $4.53 shipping. So if you love retro games just as much as I do, I suggest you get on eBay right now, before I buy them all. Next. No, this is not a giant garbage bag. Now back as a kid in the 90s, I have participated in many crazy schemes, such as Columbia Houses, eight CDs for a penny. And my mind was always blown by this guy who could float on air after building his own hovercraft. And today, we are going to take a trip down memory lane as I show you this sweet UFO solar balloon, to which probably back in 1993, in the back of Boy's Life magazine, I sent away this ad with a check, and three weeks later, I received this. To, to which, that's it. And pretty much all I remember as a kid uh, it just reminded me of a giant garbage bag, and you had to like fill it with air, uh, and then it would raise up uh, like a UFO. So today, here, whatever, 26 years later, we're going to see if the thing still has it, which I don't know. That's actually pretty crazy. Looks like a flying garbage bag UFO. That's pretty high up there. That's awesome. Now as a kid in 1992, because I didn't have a smartphone to watch all my favorite television shows on Netflix, I used to ride my bike into the middle of town to a place called Starlog that sold comic books, gag gifts, and Marvel cards. And as I was going through my shit up in the attic, I found a complete set of 1992 Marvel Universe Series 3 cards, to which those holograms were always my favorite. But because I couldn't find the holograms, I decided to go on eBay and purchased back all five of them for around $20. The cool thing is, as a kid, I used to send away for autographs from my favorite actors and sports stars, and I found this, a 1992 Marvel Universe Stan Lee autograph card to make this the ultimate complete set. And as I was perusing eBay, I saw these. 1992 Marvel Masterpieces. So I think it was about $6 a pack back in the day, and I can always remember the smell of the cards as I used to open up these packs. So what I decided to do, because I'm psycho, is spend $99.99, .99, to which there is a limited edition 350,000 boxes, 
produced. Marvel masterpieces were printed from 1992 to 2008. The cards featured large, vividly drawn card fronts and on the back, there was detailed trivia about each character. All of the artwork of these Series 1 Marvel Masterpiece cards were drawn by Joe Jesco, and the set included 100 cards plus 5 Battle Spectra cards. So what I did, because I'm crazy, is, is somehow purchase three of these 1992 Marvel Masterpiece boxes, now ranging from $80 to $99 tops on eBay. And what I figured out is that each box does in fact contain the complete set two of each cards, and roughly four hologram. To which the only hologram I was missing was the Spider-Man vs. Venom. So what I had to do was open up a second box. And after opening 35 of the 36 packs of the second box, I still had not received the Spider-Man vs. Venom Spectre card. L.A. Beast here, and I have in my hands the last pack of 1992 Marvel Masterpiece cards to where all I need to complete the set is the Spider-Man uh, versus Venom Hologram, uh, and it's a little bit frustrating right now. So let's see on the very last pack if we can make make it happen. This guy, no. Uh oh. Oh shit! I, I was like they're stuck together. Ah! <laughs> All right, they're stuck together. How do I do this without ruining? the card there we damn it i did it the last pack uh I, re I received uh hulk versus thing wolverine versus sabertooth uh and captain america there's also a thanos hologram but there we go uh, and on ebay if professionally graded can sell for a hundred bucks and as i received that card in the last pack it literally brought me back to the good old days of 1992 have here are Beanie Babies, which were a line of stuffed toys created by H. Ty Warner from 1993 to the early 2000s. And with the help of the new World Wide Web in the late 90s, Beanie Babies quickly became a fad. And they were not only collected as toys, but as an investment, because at the time there was a high resale value for certain retired Beanie Babies on eBay. Now Beanie Babies got their name because they are toys stuffed with plastic pellets called beans with PVC and PE pellet variations to where in certain circumstances Beanie Babies with PVC pellets are worth way more money and in 1993 there were nine original Beanie Babies released with the sales being extremely slow but with the help of the internet in 1995 Beanie Babies grew into a national craze in the United States of America. And at the height of this craze in 1996, Teeny Beanies coincided with the sales of McDonald's Happy Meals. But in December of 1999, Ty Inc. stopped producing Beanie Babies and had a few unsuccessful revival attempts in the early 2000s. Now, as a kid in the late 90s, I collected Beanie Babies because I thought one day they were going to be worth millions of dollars. But in the early 2010s, I read an article saying that pretty much a lot of these Beanie Babies are worth jack shit. Or are they? There are five different generations of Beanie Babies to where the first three generations are more valuable than the overproduced fourth and fifth generations. And there are many different ways to tell each generation apart, such as the earlier generations just saying the words tie on the Beanie Babies tag, whereas the fourth and fifth generations have a gold star on the tag. And during the height of the Beanie Baby craze, it was not uncommon for some of them to be shipped out with incorrect or misspelled tags, which sometimes could increase the value. There was even a large publication price guide called Mary Beth's Beanbag World, which allowed collectors to know exactly how much their Beanie Babies were worth. Some notable and rare Beanie Babies that had errors include these. The Princess Bear, which came out in 1997 to honor Princess Diana after her tragic car crash, and a Princess Bear with PVC pellets as opposed to PE pellets is worth way more. The tie-dye peace bear had errors on the hang tag, as when you see in the word original, there are two eyes. Originally, Ty came out with Tabasco the Bull, but because of possible copyright infringement from the Tabasco Hot Sauce Company, they came out with Snort the Bull and Retired Tabasco. To where nowadays on eBay, both of those can sell for a lot of money. So the hope that I have here today is that maybe I can inspire everybody to go find their Beanie Babies up in the attic. And let's create a market on eBay.
where it once was back in the late 90s as Beanie Babies created 10% of the eBay market. And also in conclusion, are Beanie Babies worth jack shit? Most likely. I would have to say as a kid, the toys that I played with the most were in fact action figures. And because as a kid I would beat the crap out of my action figures, and a lot of them looked like this. Missing a leg, missing an arm, missing some hair. What I've been doing since 2015 is trying to go on eBay and for a reasonable price buy back my favorite action figures in their original packaging. And from 2015 to 2020, what I have realized is that these things are not cheap. So what I'm going to do is share some of the action figures that I purchased back from Pee Wee's Playhouse, from the 1986 Real Ghostbusters cartoon, and these sweet WWF wrestling action figures made by Hasbro, to where nowadays some of these can sell for $500 a piece. The WWF Hasbro action figure line was produced from 1990 to 1994. Made of plastic, Many WWF wrestlers had signature action moves, and even a figure unopened out of its package can go anywhere from $20 up to $1,000. This Yokozuna, in rough condition, was purchased for $81, but in pristine condition, can sell upwards of $200. I purchased this Earthquake and Typhoon for $91 a piece, and back in 2015 I purchased this Big Boss Man for $32.98, and nowadays, they're selling around $60. Can't go wrong with a Jake the Snake Roberts, which I purchased for $47 back in 2015. And now in 2020, people are asking $120. I purchased one of the greatest tag teams of all time, the Bushwhackers, not really, for $40. And this Spanish version of Andre the Giant, I purchased back in 2015 for $103.95. And now in 2020, people are asking $200 up to $600. And finally, with tax season coming up, I recently purchased this IRS Irwin R. Scheister for $59.95. In 1984, the blockbuster movie Ghostbusters was released, and from 1986 to 1991, the toy company Kenner created the real Ghostbusters toy line in correlation with the animated cartoon series called The Real Ghostbusters. And in 1986 for Christmas time, Kenner sold out all pre-sales with toys hitting shelves in January of 1987, with the production stopping during springtime of 1991, as Kenner merged with the toy company Hasbro. And if you go on eBay nowadays, the 1986 Real Ghostbusters Kenner toy line and accessories or a hot commodity. I received the real Ghostbusters Firehouse back in 1988 as a Christmas gift, and now, in its original box, it can sell from $329 up to $600. I purchased the Ecto-1A car back in 2015 for $133 on eBay, and now in 2020, people are asking three to $500 for it. This sweet Proton Pack, which I received as a kid for Christmas, I bought back in 2015 for $220. And now in 2020, people are asking $350 up to $1,200. This sweet Slimer action figure from Canada, I purchased back in 2015 for $101.98. And now in 2020, I could only find two examples of this Slimer not in the box, to which those are selling anywhere from $50 up to $100. And even just the action figures not inside their original packaging are pretty expensive. As in 2020, I purchased all four original Ghostbusters from the 1986 line for $54. And finally, what I have here is a 1988 Matchbox Pee Wee's Playhouse playset. To where on eBay, I have found multiple examples of where you can buy this back in the original box. And for this almost complete set right here, minus Perry, the green pterodactyl, I spent $160 to where I could not find another pristine example of this almost complete playset. Now the crazy thing is, growing up as a kid, I never actually owned the playset and I did not think it was going to be this big. But as I finally set everything up, it really does actually look like you're actually watching the show as you're looking at this thing. Now a cool piece of trivia, if you didn't know, is that Cowboy Curtis was actually played by Lawrence Fishburne from the Matrix movies. Now the other characters included in this set are Pee-wee, Cherry, Conky, Magic Screen, Loby, Miss Yvonne, John B, The Puppet Land Gang, King of Cartoons, Ricardo, Reba the Mail Lady, and Randy. The one thing that I always used to remember about Pee-wee's Playhouse was the Penny claymation cartoons that they used to play 
between commercial breaks. After these messages, we'll be right back. So as this video of 80s and 90s pop culture toys that I've purchased off eBay comes to an end, I am going to, on my micro cork synthesizer, play the Pee Wee's Playhouse ending theme song.